Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. We have heard of pilots risking their lives flying into the hellfire zones during a battle, but we have seldom heard about the pilots who risk their lives flying into the tempest core of hurricanes. These hurricane hunter pilots specialize in flying into the core of storms and hurricanes, which are nature's most dangerous outcomes. Despite how bizarre this sounds, they undertake these highly perilous missions with the ultimate goal of saving lives. The United States is among the countries that have been badly affected by hurricanes. The East Coast, the Gulf Coast, and adjacent inland regions are under the greatest impact from hurricanes. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, in 2023, there were a total of 41 storms, of which 12 intensified into major hurricanes. From 1980 to the present, 6,897 deaths were recorded from tropical cyclones, and the cost incurred by them exceeded $1,400 billion. Besides the casualties and economic losses, floods caused by rainfall and storm surges increase the risk of waterborne diseases. Like most other parties, the U.S. military is not immune to the detrimental effects of the hurricanes. Hurricanes can cause damage to military infrastructure and expensive equipment. The best example is the unforeseen landfall of Hurricane Michael, which decimated Tyndall Air Force Base. Among many contributing factors for developing hurricanes, ocean water temperatures greater than 26 degrees Celsius in the tropical East Pacific and tropical Atlantic Oceans are the key contributors. In addition, wind shear with less intense vertical movement bolsters hurricane development in these regions. While controlling these factors is beyond our control, what humans can do is predict their movements. With that said, tracking a hurricane is no easy task. Complex weather patterns and their dynamic nature make hurricane tracking a task of its own. Forecasting a hurricane can be done with the availability of data. Thus, meteorologists can precisely predict the change in intensity, path, and timing of hurricanes. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is the national authority responsible for identifying climate change and predicting weather. NOAA has its own division, the National Hurricane Center, or the NHC, for monitoring and predicting tropical cyclones. They exercise multifaceted data collection methods to make data-driven forecasts. Mainly, geostationary satellites oversee the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific hurricane basins, providing real-time, high-resolution imagery. Oceanographic instruments, such as buoys and floats, are also used. 
along with other land-based sensors for continuous surveillance. If a tropical disturbance over the ocean shows potential for developing into a tropical cyclone and moving inland, more accurate data is required for understanding the storm dynamics. This can be done only by flying into the storm, and this arduous task is undertaken by the Hurricane Hunter pilots. The Hurricane Hunter fleet comprises two WP-3D Orion turboprops and one Gulfstream 4 jet. Two turboprops carrying the call signs Kermit and Miss Piggy are flown directly into the hurricane at low altitudes. The journey into the fury of a hurricane seems like a suicidal mission, as the aircraft traverses the eye wall, which is the treacherous zone of a hurricane with gusting winds, heavy rainfall, and severe turbulence. The crew collects vital data with the help of probes and radars fitted to the aircraft. GPS drop sends that are dropped from a launch tube in the aircraft at the eye wall play a vital role. Once dropped, they travel through the inner core of the hurricane and transmit crucial insights, such as wind speed and direction, humidity, pressure, and temperature back to the hurricane hunter. In addition to the NOAA's vital contributions to predicting hurricanes, NASA has its own team and a fleet of hurricane hunters serving the same function, but with a novel approach. They operate three aircraft types, a DC-8, a WB-57, and a Global Hawk unmanned airborne system. They fly at three altitude levels to identify the different stages of a tropical cyclone's development. During the Hurricane and Severe Storm Sentinel, or the HS3 campaign, NASA used two of its Global Hawk drones fitted with sensors to identify the impact of physical environmental conditions on hurricane intensity change. During this five-year mission, which started in 2010, NASA was able to cover a vast region of the Atlantic Ocean that could have been impossible with conventional aircraft due to endurance limitations. One Global Hawk was fitted with an automated vertical atmospheric profiling system to release dropsons automatically. Despite the great advancements made by NOAA and NASA in hurricane hunting, its true roots lie within the U.S. Air Force. Due to its menacing nature, no pilot would ever contemplate diving into a hurricane. But one brave pilot flew into the eye of a hurricane to win a bet by proving the sturdiness of his AT-6 Texan aircraft. In 1943, Major Joe Duckworth, a U.S. Army Air Corps pilot, made the daring move by flying into a storm and returning safely. At present, the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron operates a fleet of 10 WC-130J Hercules aircraft. providing surveillance for the National Hurricane Center. The aircraft operates with a crew of five, including the pilot, co-pilot, navigator, aerial reconnaissance weather officer, and loadmaster. Both pilots fly the aircraft into the hurricane at a height of around 10,000 feet. The navigator undertakes all flight planning to include vital checkpoints for data collection. The weather officer and the loadmaster, or drops and operator, have their workstations positioned in the cargo area aft of the cockpit.
The Aerial Reconnaissance Weather Officer uses an array of computerized weather equipment for data gathering and acts as a flight director. He coordinates with the navigator to fine tune the flight path for optimum data retrieval. The Drop Send System Operator is responsible for handling the Drop Send System and data retrieval from the launched Drop Send. In addition, the same personnel also operate the airborne expandable bath thermograph. A dedicated launch tube is used for each system. The vast amount of data collected by the hurricane hunters is transmitted in real time to the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida via satellite data links. The Hurricane Specialists Unit is the branch within the NHC responsible for continuous monitoring of tropical disturbances over the oceans. It issues regular advisories, watches, and warnings disseminated to the public via multiple platforms. In addition, the Hurricane Unit alerts the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, which is responsible for helping communities to prepare, respond, and recover from natural disasters like hurricanes, floods, and wildfires. While timely information saves people and properties inland, the same information is used to relocate ships and aircraft away from the anticipated naval bases. Usually, the Navy conducts sorties ahead of a hurricane to relocate the ships for storm avoidance. No matter how well a hurricane is predicted, people will still be affected. Thus, conducting search and rescue missions is extremely vital. Agencies like FEMA and other local authorities work hand in hand to devise the most effective search and rescue mission that will be called upon even before the hurricane. Rapid response is key in SAR missions, and helicopters are the ideal means for conducting surveillance runs and deploying SAR teams. During Hurricane Harvey, stranded people on rooftops and flooded houses were evacuated by helicopters. During the SAR missions after Hurricane Irma, we identified forward operating bases and evacuation of lily pads, or initial drop-off points, played an effective role during civilian transportation. In addition to usual evacuation missions, SAR teams undertake peculiar missions that are extremely vital for smooth SAR operations. One such example is the Army Airmen erecting an ATC tower in the Caribbean islands when the existing tower was damaged by Hurricane Irma. As the year 2023 ranked top for the most number of billion dollar weather disasters, an alarming trend has started to loom around. Factors such as rising ocean water temperature, global warming, and global sea level come together to make the perfect recipe for hurricane development. While global initiatives have been taken to battle these complications, natural disasters will definitely be on the rise. With that said, being prepared remains the optimal solution to facing natural disasters. Recurrent training and drills could support this comprehensive preparedness, which will be evident from the number of lives saved. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.